Hello, in this lecture, we will talk about the double entry accounting system in terms of debits and credits. Debits and credits being the building blocks of the double entry accounting system of the financial statements. When we think about the double entry accounting system, we can think about it in a few different ways. One being the accounting equation, that being assets equal liabilities plus equity. Usually the first way that people think about it when we start learning financial accounting that then leads in easily to the balance sheet, which is another way we can represent the double entry accounting system. In essence, the same way because the balance sheet consists of three parts, assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. That is our accounting equation. The third way is a bit more abstract and that will be in terms of debits and credits. It's just as crucial when we are creating the financial statements, but a bit more abstract in that we know that total debits have to equal total credits for all accounts. If total debits equal total credits for all accounts, that is the same thing. That means that the accounting equation must be in balance and that the balance sheet must be in balance. When we learn accounting, usually we start with the accounting equation. And by the time we start talking about debits and credits, people start saying, hey, I understand the double entry accounting system in terms of the accounting equation. I understand the balancing method. I get all of the double entry accounting equation method. Why do I need debits and credits? To answer that, I would compare the accounting equation and the debits and credits to the accounting equation being like a screwdriver. Not too many parts, easy to understand. I totally understand how to use the screwdriver. However, if we have a big job, we might want something like an electric screwdriver. Electric screwdriver having a bit more parts. We need electricity, a bit harder to use. However, if we're building something like a house, we probably want the electric screwdriver. Same thing in terms of the accounting equation and debits and credits. The accounting equation is easy to understand in some ways, but if we're building the financial statements, even if they're small financial statements, we need a better tool. We need debits and credits. That's why we need to learn them. If you're learning financial accounting, how to put the financial statements together, can't get around really understanding, memorizing debits and credits. That being said, what are debits and credits? We can compare them to something like a game, something like checkers. If we look at debits and credits, it's similar to the checkerboard in that we have the board on which we put the pieces. The debits and credits are the board where we're basically going to put the pieces. We can also compare it similar to something like learning music. Both of these two things, if you've taught someone checkers or if you've taught someone music or tried to learn the two yourself, then the most difficult part usually is just the rogue memory you gotta do. Where do the pieces go? How do they move? What kind of notes, what kind of chords do I have to just learn and memorize before we can put those things together? The rogue memory is easy, but not fun. And usually what stops most people from moving forward to the more interesting part, which is actually playing the game, playing the music, putting these things together. If we look at our board in terms of the debits and credits, the T account basically, and our basic pieces in terms of the three account types, not really accounts, but the account types, remember there's gonna be accounts within these account types of assets, liabilities, and equity, where do we line these up in terms of normal balances on our board? Well, assets are gonna be normal debit balance accounts for the most part. There will be exceptions, but for the most part, all assets will have debit balances. Liabilities will line up all liabilities as normal balances on the credit side, and equity will have a net credit. So notice I kind of hedged there on the equity, meaning we're gonna have a net credit why? Because we know the entire income statement is part of equity and the income statement has subcategory accounts of, of revenue and expenses, which have their own debits and credits. So the total of equity will be a credit, but we're going to have to look at those components, including the income statement of revenue and expenses. So if we look at what we have so far, you might be looking at that and saying, well, hey, that is the accounting equation. Assets on the left equals liabilities and equity on the right. In essence, that's true and the balance sheet, assets on the left and liabilities and equity on the right. So what we have right here is the format. If you just learn that the assets are basically normal balance of debits, of debits and the liabilities and equities have normal balance of credits, that's a good start. Using this as a cheat sheet is a good start. What about the income statement accounts? Remember the income statement accounts represent income or revenue. That has a credit balance. We just have to memorize that, has a normal credit balance. And expenses, they have normal debit balance. We just have to memorize those two things. Those are the income statement accounts. Remember that revenue minus expenses 
hopefully it's going to be a positive number, revenue being greater than expenses, giving us net income. How is the income statement related to the accounting equation? The whole income statement is part of equity. Here's basically our cheat sheet. If you can kind of understand what we went through there, you can understand the normal balances. So let's do that one more time. We've got the accounting equation, the balance sheet. Debits are going to be assets. Credits, liabilities, and equity. Then we're going to add to that the income statement. And we know that revenue or income is a credit balance account. That usually confuses a lot of people because a lot of people confuse revenue and the asset account of cash. Cash and revenue aren't the same thing. Cash is an asset. We'll have a debit balance account. Revenue will have a credit. Then we know that expenses are going to have debits. That's the income statement. Revenue minus expenses. Hopefully the revenue is winning. Credit balance winning. And that leads to the indication that that's part of the entire equity section. Now we've looked at account types. Let's go and just describe a few accounts that are within those account types that we're, again, we're just going to have to memorize. We kind of know already what they are, but uh, we have to memorize just what type of accounts are within those account types. So we've got assets or debit balance accounts. We've got liabilities and equity or credit balance accounts. What about the actual accounts? How do we line them up on our board? Well, assets include cash. It's going to be normal debit balance. Assets include land or something, or that's going to be a normal debit balance. Assets include a car or equipment. Those are going to be normal debit balances. Supplies are going to be normal debit balance. A phone or a computer, normal debit balance. Equipment or a factory or a building, normal debit balance. Why are they, these things assets? Because we haven't yet consumed them in order to help us generate revenue. and the, They're going to help us to generate revenue in the future. Then we have liabilities. What type of accounts will go in there? How about a bank loan? That's going to be normally a credit balance account. We have vendors. If we owe the vendor, that's accounts payable or possibly a credit card fee that is due. Normal credit balances. What type of accounts will go under the equity? That's going to be what is owed to the owner, including a capital or equity account, stockholders equity, depending on how we format the company, if it's a company or a sole proprietor or a partnership. But the equity account also includes, remember, income and expenses. That's usually one of the most confusing pieces. So let's break out this equity section to that one piece being the income statement. If we look at equity in terms of the income statement and we enlarge our T account just for that segment, we know that the income statement includes revenue, which actually has a credit balance, and expenses, which have a debit balance. We know how we get to net income, bottom line of the income statement, revenue minus expenses. What does that mean? Credits hopefully are gonna be larger in dollar amount than expenses, which is why it's part of equity, which has a net credit balance. What type of accounts will be under revenue? Normally, there's only going to be a couple accounts. We might just call it revenue because we only do one thing usually. In this case, we might say we do computer repair. So computer repair, that's our revenue account. That's what we specialize in. That's what we do. How about expenses? Those are the things we consume in order to help us generate that revenue. We may have a lot of them, for example. Auto expense, not the car itself, which is an asset, but the mileage and, and the uh, expenses and related to gas and repairs and maintenance. We could have wages that we had to consume to generate revenue, meals and entertainment, the phone bill. Again, not the phone or the computer itself, but the consumption of the phone usage is going to be an expense. Then we're going to say, okay, what's the difference? What's the revenue minus expenses? That's how you calculate net income. In terms of the income statement accounts, it also is calculated as credits minus debits, which will give us the net income, which we hope will be a net credit balance, meaning we're hoping the revenue is greater than all the expenses in terms of dollar amounts, making that credit balance higher. So let's recap here. Here's our cheat sheet that we need to know. We need to know the account equation and the balance sheet. Put those accounts on our board, debits and credits. Assets are debit. Liability type accounts are credits. And equity has a net credit balance. Then we're going to look at the part of equity being the income statement that includes revenue that has a credit balance and expenses that have debit balances that's the income statement revenue minus expenses equals net income which hopefully is contributing to the credit the credit balance of equity the amount owed to the owner and we know that the entire uh, income statement will be part of the equity section if you can understand this then you can get a good idea of what the normal balances are for the account types and then memorize the type of accounts that go within each of these categories then we know the normal balances then what we need to know once we have the normal balances are how do we make these things go up and down if i know that 
assets are a normal balance of a debit. How do I make it go up? How do I make it go down? Those are the rules we'll talk about next time.